to say that he's happy with it, but he, he can't bring it in because he is um he, it will cause a split is is from a biblical perspective is really is really bad, unbiblical and very dangerous to the flock of God because the teaching the the the, the churches if they know their leader is saying that they will follow suit they will blindly follow their leader and apostasy is in the air and God isn't pleased he's not pleased with denominations or leaders who compromise on the word of God now I'm not and I'm not going to mention that particular issue but I'm just mentioning it because in the co wider context of the church in the West that's just one example of many many examples that I could bring in the evangelical community just so I'm showing you I'm not picking on uh, gay people or gay rights but in the evangelical community there has been a big debate on the doctrine of the cross the last 15 years 10 years mm -hmm. some sections of the evangelical community have seen fit to teach that the cross that Christ was punished for our sin is not biblical that it's that it's child abuse teaching and the evangelical communities had a big debate about it the fact that there was a big debate about it the fact that this particular view has been uh, allowed to Evangelical churches to me indicates again an apostate situation where the people of God are not basically they're not discerning enough to know that the gospel is that Christ was punished for our sin and if a theologian just because he's famous and trendy says that this teaching is child abuse just because a theologian who is trendy says it unless they are biblical we should not listen to them and these trendy theologians in the church have taken captive young people's minds and now many young people in the church think that Christ being punished for our sin is just not it's just not on but yet that is biblical uh, if you if you want specifics if you type in uh, evangelical type in penal substitution and Steve Chalk and uh, you'll get an example of of that debate and issue in the UK the point is there shouldn't have even been a debate within the people of God uh, another example so I'm sure you're not picking on one group is in America you have Rob Bell Rob Bell is um, in the evangelical but has come out and said he doesn't believe in the doctrine of hell and many evangelicals have followed the guy's way to me this is a great apostasy you lose the doctrine of hell then you've lost why Christ died on the cross because he was punished for our sins so that we wouldn't go to hell so I just give you three examples there as I, because we're living in a politically correct culture I don't want to give any of my uh, enemies in the UK uh, the opportunity to accuse me of picking on a particular group uh, so I've just given you three examples that I'm talking about not a specific issue but a wider issue of apostasy based on a number of issues in Western uh, church Um, so that's just the contemporary issue but scripture just pour some more water
scripture um, warns. Uh, we turn to Revelation. Excuse me. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things. This is Revelation chapter 2. Said he that holdeth the seven stars in the right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I know the works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. <laughs> Hi Mark. Hi Jay, hi brother. Yeah, I'm just in the middle of making a video, mate. All right, brother. So I'll catch you later then. You can listen in if you want, mate. You're all right. All right. I'm just talking. I'm just talking about apostasy, mate. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, you can switch off or stay in. It's up to you, mate. No, I, I listen. I listen for. I listen for a bit, Jay. Come on, you like right, this? All right. <clears throat> So I'm just talking about apostasy and just saying that um, uh, I give three examples. You can listen to that. So I'm just reading Revelation. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, says he that holdeth the seven stars in the right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patient for, for my name's sake, hast honoured, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have some what these, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this has, but this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that an ear, have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has said unto the churches. To him that overcome I will give, to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So if you read Revelations chapter 2 and 3, you'll see that Christ is... Um, He's unhappy with the church because there are loads of issues where the churches are apostatizing, sexual issues, all sorts of issues. So apostasy is is um, is biblical. It teaches biblical. It's it's, it's it's in the Bible. We've seen it in contemporary culture. It's in the Bible, and we're just going to look at a few thoughts. Uh, have you got anything to say about Revelation, Mark? Um. Yeah, it's a, it's a part Arminianism. What's that, bro? It supports Arminianism. You can lose your salvation. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> because your name can be blotted out the Lamb of Book of Life. All right. That, that's all. I, that's my only thoughts on that. All right, mate. Also, something about the idea of. Um, the apostles being unique, and how can there be no new apostles today? Because it talks about the names of the twelve apostles being written. Yeah. On the uh, the twelve tribes being written, on is it the new temple or something? Yeah, yeah. Which shows the which is an, another text that shows the uniqueness of the the the, the early church apostles in contrast to. The people claim the apostles today. Yeah. Because it's not going to be their names that are wrote. So again, that shows that the book of Revelation has a Jewish context as well. Yeah. In contrast to the Gnostics and the other Gospels. It's Jewish in character. Wow, that's amazing, mate. So it's not rooted, it's not, it's not rooted from the Old Testament, is it? 
because it's, it's going back to the history about the 12 tribes and, and all the rest of it. Wow. Um, oh, sorry, go on, mate. Well, I I um I I was I was talking about uh just just uh just so you people could get a different opinion than what I was saying because uh, people might have been shocked what I was saying I, I was saying that uh, you might um you, I don't I don't know what you think but I think you probably disagree with me but uh, I don't I don't know anyway but I was just saying about apostasy in the West that the church is apostatizing uh, and I said there's there's blessing there's encouragement but but then I, I used a couple of examples one of them was um, the Archbishop uh, and I was just saying that he was talking about gay marriage and that he agreed with it but he wouldn't bring it in because it had split the Anglican Church right and I was just saying that that's not acceptable that a leader of a of the church takes that position and is that what he when did he say that Jay? I'm shocked by that. Um, it's it's common knowledge. Um, it's been in the news and stuff. But if you just if you uh, if you just go and have a Google and find out his views, that's you know he, he he's he's he'd bring it in, but he can't bring it in because it'll cause a split. Right. Yeah. So um, that's interesting. But I, I so I said I said that so. Uh, with you going into the Anglican ministry, uh, what what would your thoughts be about that? My, well, my thoughts uh, it, it mentions what what will happen if the Church of England splits is. It'll use its ecumenical relations with the Roman Catholic Church, right? Or seem to be, or seem to be strong on anti-gay marriage, and um, and the Eastern Orthodox as well, right? So it's got a risk of losing its ecumenical partnerships with the Roman Catholic Church, and the Roman Catholic Church is still strong in terms of morality and ethics and things like that, right? Um, I'm a bit shocked at it because I thought I thought he'd have been like I, th I thought that he'd have had personal reasons to be against the gay marriage. Well, you'll have to you'll have to from a personal level of faith rather than like a political one as well. Yeah, but you'll have, you'll have to check it, mate. Oh, I'll, I'll have to definitely have to check it. Yeah, and uh, I'll I'll check it, but I'm sure that's what his position is. All right, here's a couple of scriptures. Um, Um, it says, uh, I think it's uh, just uh, 2 Timothy 3. <laughs> 2 Timothy 3, 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and have been assured of knowledge, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and what from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 5 and 11 now for this very reason also apply all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence in your moral excellence, knowledge in your knowledge, self-control in your self-control, perseverance in your perseverance, godliness and in godliness brotherly kindness and in brotherly kindness love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, 
the, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied to you. The point about that scripture is that we're not to just get, we're, we're to realize the dangers of the time, but we're to be positive, we concentrate on truth about building ourselves up, growing in knowledge and in love and in the things of God. The, the teachers of God's word in the past, they did rebuke sin and they did, they did expose 